Alrighty then, well we are gonna pick up right where we left off, dude. And that is not knowing exactly what the fuck to do. Alright, my original idea of just getting underneath here and putting some, you know, drilling some holes and putting some screws in, it's not working out for the best. It's kind of difficult to get a drill up inside of here and drill holes, especially with how small the lip is on this thing. It's a really small lip, dude. So in order to get those holes to really line up right with that lip, like I don't want to accidentally poke out right here and put a hole where it's going to be visible. So we're gonna have to drill the holes with it off of the car. So I have kind of a game plan. I don't know if it's gonna work, but let's give it a shot. All right, so what I did here with this still on the car, I put some masking tape across the bumper and I marked a line for the relation where this sits against the bumper so that I have something to line it back up to once I pulled it off the car. I pulled both sections off of the car, lined them back up. So now when you flip it over, you see I have both pieces clamped together so that it doesn't move around on me. Now what I need to do is go through the back side of the bumper. I'll actually be drilling holes through this way making sure that I catch that little lip that little metal lip of the garnish piece so that then I could just put a bunch of screws in it and it'll be held together permanently And there is our finished product, all screwed together. Came out pretty good, dude. Now I used a bunch of screws, okay? I used a lot of screws. You're not gonna be able to see these ones. Um, and that's because I'm hoping that this is also, like I mentioned in the last video, going to help with the, uh, the bumper sag, you know what I'm saying? In which, it already looks good, bro. Check it out. Look at that. Look how tight and closed up that seam is right there. Boy, what's up, man? That's exciting to see, bro. I hate, I just, I hate that inconsist, uh, bleh, inconsistent seam that was always right there because the bumper is kind of wavy or whatever. Uh, because, you know, this these are plastic or rubber or whatever you want to call them. And uh, in the sun, getting hot and cold and... They, just, they warp, you know what I'm saying? So with it all screwed together like that, it's just, it's gonna help keep it nice and straight. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do before I go and take this apart and start getting it ready for paint, um, we're gonna go ahead and mount it back on the car one more time, just to double check and make sure that the fitment's gonna be correct. Um, because if it is off, um, I, I, already screwed, I already screwed it down, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, if it's off, I'll probably have to oversize the holes to try to kind of move it around. Fingers crossed, dude. I hope it fits good because it's going to be kind of hard to fix it if it don't. <laughs> Well, it looks 
like I'll have to have somebody help me put this on now because in order to line everything all up at one time putting it on, dude, it's kind of hard by yourself. What can I say? But it's all good, bro. No worries. The only thing that I'll have to do, because I mean, it was just it was just slightly off. It, was, it you know it honestly it irritated me is why I didn't freaking record it. But um, the only thing that I'll have to do is the holes that are on the inside of the bumper. I have to make them a little bit bigger because as long as these holes on the metal are the size for the threads on the screws to grab. I'll just oversize these a little bit and that'll give us some play to move these pieces back and forth slightly just so I can get everything to line up perfect. So now what we gotta do is we gotta get this thing painted. But if you look at its current state, dude, it's got a really thick layer of uh, primer on here that's kind of went to hell. Um, I, I basically, I want to get this all the way down to metal. Like, I don't want any of this crap paint underneath my paint job. And the best way to do that would be to sandblast it. But I don't have a sandblaster, personally. Um, I know I've sandblasted quite a few parts on the car in the past that you guys have seen. If, you, uh, if you've watched all of my videos, you've seen that there, there's quite a few things that I sandblasted, like the, uh, the front cross member, the control arms, all that kind of stuff I sandblasted before painting. But... Um, that's when I had access to a sandblaster. The shop that I worked at before, they had one. The shop that I work at now no longer has one. Or they, they don't have one, I mean to say. Um, anyhow, I have an idea, bro. It's an idea that I actually found on YouTube. Um, if I could find the original video where I saw it, I'll put it in the description below. Um, I'll have to look for it. But basically, I'm going to show you really quick how they showed me you can make a sandblaster out of a blowgun, dude. So what I have here is an air nozzle that I got from Home Depot. It's Husky brand, obviously. Uh, I think this thing was like 15 bucks. I don't remember for sure, but I know you can get them at Harbor Freight. Uh, you can get them pretty much anywhere that sells tools. Um, this one actually has holes in the nozzle. You see those holes? The one, the video that I watched on how to make one of these, it had a nozzle that looked more like this. That didn't have the holes in it. The guy in his instructions show that you had to notch it right here for the sand to actually be able to pass through it. I'm hoping that since this one already has holes in the nozzle that that's gonna work in our favor and we are able to kind of skip that step. So basically what the idea here is, is we're gonna take a bottle. I just have a regular water bottle here. We gotta cut a hole in it right here so that the nozzle can pass all the way through it to where that hole, the holes in the nozzle are gonna sit inside of the bottle. So then we'll fill this thing full of sand and as we're spraying it, the sand is gonna fill those holes and it's gonna blast out the front of this thing, acting as basically a little homemade sandblaster, dude. So let's give it a shot and see how it works. All right, so the problem is I think this is moving. Well, I know this is moving way too much material, but why? Um, I think it's because it has two holes in it rather than just one and the holes are kind of large. Um, this is designed to suck air through really fast to speed up air out the nozzle. That's why it's a high flow air nozzle. So I went ahead and used that other one that I had in there and I just kind of notched a hole in it. It's a much smaller hole than what this has and it's only one hole rather than two. So I'm going to give this a shot now. Maybe, hopefully this will work because yeah. That was that entire water bottle full of sand. Blew out in like three seconds, dude. I mean, it took all the paint off, but yeah, that, that's not gonna work. All right, here goes round two. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 
okay, I think I need safety glasses. It didn't work out too well. I mean, it works. It works. Don't get me wrong. It works. So it wasn't a complete failure, but it doesn't work on this very well because, <sighs> yeah, that that's it just doesn't. But it will work on the hardware. If you, can you see that? Yeah, it, it'll work on the hardware. I think it'd be a really good thing if I were to sandblast the hardware because. I put some more together to paint some more black. <sighs> yeah. Anyhow. Slide freaker. Skyscraper. And this is an after. I mean, you guys can see a difference, right? You can see a difference. All right, I can't see a difference, man. Just, the homemade sandblaster is a it's a complete flop. Whatever, whatever. Still doesn't eliminate the fact that we need to get all the paint off of this damn thing. So, we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. Dude. So, this is gonna take a minute. <laughs> daylight but just in time we got this thing sprayed so it's gonna need some time to dry and then we'll be able to put all this stuff together 
and get the rear bumper finally mounted to the car. Um, I also got some more black hardware sprayed so that we can get the other side, this side here finished for the side molding. Because we need to get that done. Now as far as the fenders, I know I mentioned in the last video we're going to get the fender, well get to working on the fenders anyhow. Um, I didn't make it to that and mostly because I can't decide dude, like I want to do the heat escape for the brakes. But I don't know if I want to do, just do a straight chop and eliminate that whole bottom section or if I want to do a cut something like this where it kind of comes back and then splits down this way and then fold that, fold it in from there. Um, I'm going to make a post on Built Not Bought. I know a lot of you guys are new to the channel. Um, I know I haven't brought up Built Not Bought in a while. But that is a uh, Facebook group that I started just for us, dude. Just so you can go in there and and share all your builds, uh, ask questions, anything that you, you know, anything you got going on, dude. Go in there and have a conversation about it. Now, before we end this video, I wanted to show something to you guys really quick. I still have these 82 millimeter CTR pistons that we bought. Well, I bought for the um, for the Type R block. God, let me get it out. Yeah, I bought these for the Type R block in which we didn't end up using them. It comes with the rings, uh, it's got the pistons, it's got the little pin inside of there. And they are still brand spanking new, bro. They haven't been used, they've just been sitting in this box here doing nothing. Now I was just gonna sell these and then I decided, you know what, why don't I just give them away, you know what I'm saying? So, starting today until the 27th, next Sunday, the 27th, between now and then, anybody who orders stickers on the site, whenever you order a sticker, you go on a little list, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to be picking one of my customers, I'll be picking one, and I'm going to be mailing these freaking pistons out to you, man. So, what's up? Now, they are 82 millimeter CTRs, so they are going to be really high compression. Now, whether you can use them or not, you know, that's up to you. Hell, uh, I mean, if you if you can't use them, maybe you can just sell them, bro. Make some money. It is what it is, man. So today, until next Sunday, copy some stickers. Get on that list, bro. Um, and I'll be picking one of my customers and sending you out some big-ass domes, brother. What's up? Merch store so you can buy some stickers is always the very first link in the description below. Click on that. It'll take you straight there. It's a really easy process, so um, hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Peace out, and I'll see you on Wednesday, brother.